This is Jerome Durley Hickman Jr. Okay, I'm going to give you my opinion about, about the protest that's going on in downtown Louisville. And the situation is, is that the protest is going on here in Louisville, Kentucky, because there was a black woman that got killed by a police officer. And her boyfriend even shot the police to protect his woman, but he goes to jail. And that's just, and that's not right that the boyfriend had to go to jail because he was protecting his woman. That was not right at all, but he's out of jail. Thank God for that. But you know, but you know, I'm getting tired of these police getting away with killing black men when they really don't have to kill black men and they do it because they nasty and, they, and, and some of them are, are do it because they're racist. And I get tired of, of, of these white police officers getting away with it. But you know, the situation is, is that when it's always a white person that they approach, they don't pull a gun out at them at first when they get to them or whatever. But when it comes to black, but when it comes to these young black men, they always got to pull a gun out and approach them and keep a gun on them until a police officer puts them in handcuffs or until they put them on handcuffs. And you know, and that's sad because I feel like that's not right to do black men like that, but you don't do the white men like that. Or you don't do any other race of men like that, but you'll do the black men like that. It's not right. And you know, and the situation is, is that first of all, you know, it's killing me that some of these black people are trying to stop their own families participating in this protest. It does not make no sense. And the situation is, is that if it really wasn't for black people out here protesting, if it wasn't for the black people back in the 1960s and 50s protesting against Jim Crow laws and stuff like that, then black people, we wouldn't even have the rights that we have now to be around, to go where we want to go, drink out of the same water fountain, go where places we want to go, be able to hang with white people and stuff like that. I mean, we just wouldn't be able to do all that if it wasn't for the protest to happen. Well, you know, the situation is, is that a lot of these black people, I'm t especially, you know, white people, because there's a lot of white people in this protest too. But, but this is the thing. And I'm not going to even say white and black people on this, on this part of the situation, but I'm going to say the protesters. But the situation is that the protesters even threw paint on the Hall of Justice. I mean, they threw paint at the courthouse in downtown Louisville at the Hall of Justice, threw paint on, on, the, on the rails, threw paint on the doors. It was funny. It was so funny. They threw paint on them doors and threw paint on, on them steps. Because you know what? I like the fact they did that because, for number one, the courthouse deserved it. Because, for number one, they don't want to do their job to, to take action on these situations, on the situation that happened with the black woman, and the man goes to jail for, for, for self-defense. And then there's always issues where court cases have been unfair in that place, too. So you know what? It was, it was, it was, it was funny when they threw paint on the, the rails and, and the, and the, and the uh, doors at the Hall of Justice. But the thing is, is that they now are trashing other places in Louisville now. They even trashed them. They was, they're trying to trash, they trash uh, 4th Street Live, from what I heard. And then they trash some other restaurants in downtown Louisville. I'm telling you, these protests are really, really going out of hand now. But you know what? As black folks, we tired of this, this shit. We tired of this, you know, shit that we got to put up with, with police officers targeting, killing black men when they don't have to and they get away with it. We're sick and tired of it. And you know what? And it's, and it's even said that you got good police that that knows this stuff's going on, but they don't. But they, but they, but they don't want to take no action to fight against it and put their foot down because they're afraid that they'll lose their job, or they'll get kicked off the police force, or they're afraid that they can lose their pensions, or you know whatever. That's just what I'm thinking. Why the good police don't want to step up to these bad police officers and and snitch on them and get them turned in because they're afraid that they're gonna lose their job, or they're afraid that their coworkers or the police officers are gonna retaliate against them. And that's what I'm thinking. Why the good police afraid to stick up for us. But the situation is, is that, you know what? If Louisville doesn't do a good job to solve this situation, then maybe every maybe a lot of place maybe a lot of places need to be need to be torn up in Louisville. Restaurants need to be torn up, stores need to be torn up. It'd be really nice if we could find a, if people can find a way to make it to where the stores 
you know, won't be able to have no customers coming there or whatever because of the protests. Or it'd be nice if the protests can go to all the shopping malls here in Louisville and make them lose money, make the stores lose money, make all the Walmarts lose money, make every business lose money where the city of Louisville gets tax revenues off that money. You know, if it's even the casino, if it's even like Derby City Gaming, which I, I don't even think Louisville and Kentucky is that much off of Derby City Gaming, but the point of it is, is that, 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 um, if they do, it would be good if they can make it to where people don't people ain't gonna show up to casino because of protests. We need to hurt every business, every mall, to make these businesses lose money because of the simple fact Louisville doesn't want to try to get themselves together. You know what I mean? And they gotta try hard enough, and they're not trying hard enough. And we don't see no action until we don't see no action. Then until I don't see no action, I don't feel sorry for the city of Louisville right now. Until I see some action being done. And I see the mayor, you know, and everybody else tries the best to solve these situations. And even the police chief saw these situations. That you know what? I don't care if Louisville gets messed up. I don't care if every business is damaged where people have broke windows and people have damaged their properties and people have damaged, you know, the Hall of Justice, the police department and all that. Because why should, I mean, because this is my thing, is that why should we spend money and pay taxes to these people in Louisville and spend money in these businesses in Louisville. And Louisville's getting all this money and Kentucky's getting money out of business. And then what's really bad is they want to keep letting situations like this happen in Louisville. That stuff needs to, you know what? I'm sorry. And I'm and I'm joining and I'm watching the TV and I'm joining every bit of business. Every bit of these businesses are getting hit bad. They're, I mean, they're getting hit bad. You know, and I, I, I'm enjoying seeing it on TV. And I don't care how people feel, and it's just sad. That, you know, I can't really participate in the protest too much because I got people that really love me. They feel like they don't want, they think I'm going to die and all that mess. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's a, it's, you know, and I, and I have to understand their feelings too, because if maybe if I had a kid, especially if I only, if I was only have one kid and they went through situation, they were going through something like this, I probably would have to be very protective and, and not want them to go into the protest. But at the same time, all I gotta do is pray to God and Jesus that that Jesus and God will protect him through the situation. So that way, so that way, nothing won't happen to him. And they said this. They said yesterday, seven people got shot yesterday. Now I don't know if the police did it, or maybe somebody that is working for the police and dressing the way we dress did it, or maybe some of the black people have did it. But you know, but the the situation is is that if some of the black people are involved with doing these shootings yesterday. They need to not really be doing that because for number one, okay, we out here fighting for all black people to get fair treatment from the police. And we're even and we're even fighting even for them to get fair treatment from the police. And I feel like that's not fair for them to tackle us. You know, it's not I mean, I'm not saying that they're doing it, but if they are, it's not I feel like this way that that if the black men, if the young black men got beef between other black men, put that stuff to the side. Put it to the side and, and focus on trying to fight for those black men and all black men. And because my th cause, cause the enemy that we need to fight in this situation, in these protests, is the police and that's it. Don't fight against each other. Fight against the police. That's who we need to go after. That's who we need to have the beef with, is, is with the police. Don't have the beef with each other have a beef with the police so i'm getting ready to go now but i'm gonna talk more about it tomorrow and and like i say they really turn that city up bad i mean it's funny it's funny that they all these businesses are getting damaged and hit and everything is funny it's so funny <laughs> i hope it, man well we gotta go now so this is jerome Lurling jr thank you for listening to me and i'm gonna try to talk again tomorrow